In this presentation, I will be discussing how standards-based grading works at Hayes High School. If you are interested in learning about why we are moving to standards-based grading in the building, you can watch the video titled, Why We Use Standards-Based Grading at Hayes. My name is Jake Schaefer. I'm one of the assistant principals at Hayes High School, and I have a unique perspective on standards-based grading because I taught in this program at Hayes. I had the chance to help develop the program, and I am now an administrator in the building. This program means a lot to me, and it has been very successful for our student achievement, but we have some work to do as a building to make sure our families understand the way it works. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Before getting into the details, I first want to say that the classroom experience does not look much different in a standards-based classroom than in a traditional classroom. Our teachers still teach using a diverse set of teaching strategies. They still do activities, they still give tests and quizzes, and they still have students work in groups. Standards-based grading changes the way that students are assessed, not the way that teachers teach. We believe the grades should reflect what students know and are able to do. This is where standards-based grading comes in. Let's talk about the structure of a standards-based course. Every course is built around 10 to 15 priority standards. These are the major categories of skills that students are expected to learn throughout the course. Grades are determined by student performance in each of these priority standards. Let's take a look at what a priority standard looks like. Within each standard are the set of skills that students need to master. These skills vary in difficulty across four levels. When students receive grades on a standard, they will receive a grade between 0 and 4 based on what level of skills they have mastered. Skills in level one are the skills that are absolutely necessary in order for a student to receive a passing grade on a standard. Often, level one contains vocabulary for the unit in addition to foundational skills. Students who complete only the level one content receive a D minus. Level two contains the basic skills for the standard. In tested courses, these are the skills that would be necessary to pass the state test. Students who complete skills from level one and two receive a C minus. Level three skills are all of the skills that are required in the unit. Students who complete level three have done everything teachers could ask them to do. Students who complete the skills in level three receive an A minus. Level four contains skills that are extensions beyond the requirements. These skills often involve applying skills to new situations, combining skills, or using skills in a creative way. Students who complete level four receive an A+. It is possible that students will master some skills in the level before they master them all. Therefore, students may also receive half of a grade level, like a 2.5 or 3.5. Let's go through an example of a standard and a proficiency scale. Suppose that making a grilled cheese sandwich is one of the standards in my class. As a team, our department would write a proficiency scale for that standard which includes all of the skills related to making a grilled cheese. In level one, we would include the vocabulary and any foundational skills necessary to pass the unit. That could be naming the ingredients and tools necessary to make a grilled cheese, bread, cheese, butter, stove, pan, spatula, etc. I can sign off that you pass with a D minus if you can at least tell me the ingredients and tools necessary to make a grilled cheese. Level two is the basic skills. So in this level, the skill may be to make a basic grilled cheese. The student can assemble the ingredients in order and cook a basic grilled cheese. Maybe that grilled cheese is burnt or undercooked, but the student has the basics. Level three contains all the skills students need to make a perfect grilled cheese. The bread is cooked to a golden brown. The cheese is melted. The sandwich is excellent. This work deserves an A. Finally, level four would ask for an extension on those skills. This could include creating new recipes to elevate grilled cheese. Maybe it includes adding new ingredients or cooking methods. Notice how logical it is that we would begin with the most basic skills and work our way up this proficiency scale as students gain skills. It also makes sense that we would assess whether students have the skills in one level before asking them to attempt the next level. It would not make sense to ask a student to elevate a grilled cheese if they cannot yet name the ingredients or cook a simple sandwich properly. 
Organizing the skills within a standard into proficiency scales allows us to give more meaningful feedback to help students learn. Suppose a student received a B on their grilled cheese. A traditional grade may say minus 15 points with the score of B. The student knows their sandwich wasn't perfect, but they may not know why. With standards-based grading, the student would receive feedback telling them which particular skills they mastered and which they are still working on. Maybe the bread was golden, but the cheese wasn't melted perfectly. Maybe the heat was too high on the pan. Students would know what they still needed to work on. Let's now look at how grades are calculated within the standards-based grading system. Grades are determined by student performance across each of the 10 to 15 priority standards in a course. Students receive a grade from 0 to 4 in each standard. Those scores are averaged to give the student their final grade for the year. Students that have not been assessed yet on a certain standard do not have that standard counted in the final grade until they are assessed. In other words, students do not start with a zero in every standard. They start with that grade exempt from their overall grade until they have the chance to demonstrate their skills. Students will have the opportunity to be assessed on each standard multiple times throughout the year. Again, the timeline for learning is flexible in standards-based grading, so students have multiple opportunities to show what they know and are able to do. Because standards are assessed multiple times, we do not want to hold it against students if they have grown in their ability during the term. Therefore, PowerSchool will only count the highest score that a student receives on a standard. For instance, this student received a 2, a 2.5, and a 2 when they were assessed on standard 2. PowerSchool will count the 2.5 highlighted in yellow as the overall grade. For more information about how to read and interpret PowerSchool grades, watch the video dedicated to PowerSchool at Hayes. Here are the conversions from the numerical grades to letter grades. The letter grade associated with the score on the standard is what PowerSchool will show. In the standards-based grading system, assessments are different among departments and courses, but in general, students are assessed at one level of a proficiency scale at a time. Students that demonstrate a skill 80% of the time are considered proficient in that skill. If a student can make a perfect grilled cheese four out of five times, they can make a perfect grilled cheese. This means that we do not assess students on skills that they're not ready for as well. Tests and quizzes in this system are concerned, again, with skills. They have nothing to do with points. If the student shows that they have the skill, then they get credit for that skill. One major difference between traditional grading and standards-based grading is that the grade you see in PowerSchool for any standard is just a snapshot of where the student is right now. Grades are not final in standards-based grading until the end of the summer. As students work their way up the proficiency scale, there may be times where the grade in PowerSchool is lower than it will eventually be. Students may have only been assessed on level one or level two. They may be waiting to retake a quiz or they may not have even been taught the level three and level four material yet. This is why we've moved to year-long grades at Hayes. Grading skills instead of points takes time. However, if you are concerned about a grade or have questions about where your student is in a standard, you can always contact your student's teacher and they would be happy to help. Finally, we recognize that Though we support the use of reassessments because students learn at different paces and have different needs, our students also need to be exposed to situations where the stakes are higher. We need to teach our students how to prepare for situations where they may only get one chance, such as college exams, state testing, certification exams, job interviews, or situations in adult life where students need to perform at their best with only one chance to do so. The way we do this is with the use of midterms and final exams. These cumulative exams will be given at the end of each semester and cannot be retaken. They will be reflected in the gradebook as their own standard because retaining information and preparing for exams are their own skills. The exam standard, or spiral skills as it is commonly referred to, counts the same as any other standard throughout the year. 
Thank you for viewing this presentation about how standards-based grading works at Hayes. For detailed information about why we chose to move to standards-based grading at Hayes High School, take a few minutes to watch the video entitled, Why We Use Standards-Based Grading at Hayes. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me using the contact information on this slide. Thank you again.